everybody, welcome today. It's great to see so many faces I know, some faces I don't know. Um, really looking forward to getting to meet some new ones. And I'm here to talk about choosing your adventure in Salesforce. So finding your own path in the Salesforce ecosystem. And I really wanna put the um, emphasis on own because everybody's path's gonna be different and that's what we're gonna be seeing today. So it's not just um, necessarily beginners getting into Salesforce, but really everybody because we're always making choices, we're always making decisions that are impacting our career tra trajectory. So here's my name, and rather than talking about myself to start off, I wanted to start by talking about some awesome trailblazers out here. So I know I have one in the room. Um, Simon, you'll have to wave to everybody. <laughs> I'm picking on him today. But I wanted to tell some stories about different people getting into Salesforce and where they came from and where they are now, just to highlight the point that no two paths are going to be the same. So we've got Simon here. Simon was uh, in the mental health space and working in the nonprofit space, and now has trained, has done some really awesome stuff, and is working in a nonprofit as a product manager within the nonprofit. And now he's out there making all of these awesome videos, some training videos, you should go check them out, but really doing some amazing work. But from that not normal, uh, the typical, going to university, getting a software degree background, but coming from all of these different places. We also have Karat. So Karat couldn't be here today. Um, none of the other ones could be, but we're bringing them to London's Calling with us. And Karat came from the software background. So she went to university, she studied software engineering, went into QA work, and now she's a solutions engineer with an ISV. And she's studying more, she's studying scale-up arcs to become an architect, and really just blossoming that way. Lauren has another career path as well. So Lauren came in and she um, came into the Salesforce space, started down the solution architect route, and then realized that she really liked the marketing side. So while she was hands-on before, she decided that, hey, I like all of this marketing, I like this product tech evangelist path, and she's going down that path instead. And she just got a certificate from Cornell University. So she, on digital marketing. So not necessarily a Salesforce certification, but a really complimentary skill. And the last person I'm going to mention here is Laura. So Laura is um, one of my fellow certified instructors. And she came in through the finance and accounting path went into the banking space and then kind of fell into Salesforce, like many of us do. She was um, the champion, the sponsor for a Salesforce implementation and then ended up taking over ownership for it. And now she's teaching and delivering Salesforce. She's our awesome marketing cloud Salesforce instructor. So really what I wanted to show with these four different individual paths, these stories, is how everybody's is different. Everybody came from different spaces. Everybody got to a place where they are today. And while they're doing that, they're constantly learning. They're constantly giving back. They're constantly doing, studying more, really um, advancing themselves there. And that's always resonated with me because I was an English teacher way back in the day and uh, definitely took a very twisting path to Salesforce. So rather than talking about myself today, um, I wanted to put the highlight on them, but I started as a bio major. So I was bio major going down the path for med school, decided to switch on over into French, I figured out that uh, while living in France, I couldn't teach French to the French. And uh, <laughs> they don't listen to me. And uh, started to teach English and then got into Salesforce from there just because we were using Salesforce and picking it up. And now I'm to where I am today as a certified instructor and working in the consultancy space. So really just exploring and finding your own way. And uh, now I'm just going to throw in a picture of my newborn <laughs> when she was born. This is my first child. Her name is Alicia. And um, so I mentioned that I live in France now. I'm originally from the US. And we live in a bicultural household. My fr husband is French. I'm American. And one of the first things we realized when we had our first kid uh, in France was that everybody has an opinion. And people do things differently in the US. They do different things differently in France, very differently sometimes. And all of the kids survived. Like, 
So, so there's not one right answer. It's not your kid will not survive if you don't do this. It's more so, well, hey, if everybody's doing it differently and ev it's working for everybody, we're all productive human beings at the end of the day, then there's gotta be something there. So we learned really quickly to throw out the rule book. All of those parenting books, yes, read them, take what you want and leave the rest. And that's what I found really worked well with my Salesforce career as well, because everybody has their opinion about where you should go next, how you should get into the ecosystem. And some of them are right for some people and some of them are right for other people. And it's just really keeping that in mind that you can throw out the rule book, you can just take what serves you and then leave the rest. And that's what we're gonna talk about a bit more today. So there's so many different paths and that's the hardest part is getting started. Where do I get started? I can go down the admin role, the dev role, there's marketing, consultant, architect. Salesforce keeps coming out with certifications, with new paths. We've got the sales rep path now, we've got the designer path all of these different places to go. And sometimes that's really exciting, but at the same time, it's really overwhelming because there's just so much stuff out there. How do I pick what's gonna be right for me? And we've got all of these certifications. So I tried to get the most up-to-date one. I think that even though this, um, the little writing on the bottom says January, 2023, there's already been a new cert added. So this is already out of date, <laughs> but we have so many different certifications and even when you're starting to plan your certification path even this can be overwhelming so it's really about picking a path picking what's interesting to you and i'm going to have a bunch of tips at the end i'm giving things away now but following your curiosity too is a big factor here and then certifications aren't enough. And I know that's like a gasp moment for some people, but <laughs> they aren't quite enough here. So it's about all of those complementary skills. We talk about the hard skills, like the tech skills that you can pick up, but also what are the soft skills that can help you out? And that's also going to be something that helps you as you're deciding what's the next thing I'm going to be learning or studying or where do I want to go next? What kind of topics here interest you? So bring all of these related topics, bring your past skills too, because all of those stories that I mentioned before, everybody had a very unique skill set to bring to the table. And it's not about, oh, I'm transitioning into Salesforce, I'm transitioning into tech, and I'm starting from scratch. No, a lot of us have some of those life skills already and we've been places, we've done things, and it's about bringing those to the table. I know I even talk about it a lot with moms because like, you're a project manager. Even if you have never been in a project management role, if you're managing kids' schedules and keeping a household going, project management skills there. And there's a whole bunch of different things like that. So some tips as well, things like getting hands on, actually going into a dev org, starting to build things, starting to figure out what your interest is. If you say, oh, this sounds interesting, but then you start to build it and you're like, oh, this is really boring. I can't see myself doing this every day for the next however many years or months or whatever that contract might be, then that might not be the right path. And it's okay to switch over and do something else. And then get out of your comfort zone. So this is a really hard one to do, but also a really powerful one. As much as possible, it might be a reason why uh, I do too many things, but as much as possible, I like to say yes to things, even if it's putting me outside of my comfort zone. And one example was signing up for the Open Source Commons Project declarative lookup roll-up summary. I was not a dev at the time, or I was trying to get into dev, so I very much so had the imposter syndrome. And I got to sit there in a room with all of these really awesome devs, like uh, Andy Fawcett, who works for Salesforce, and just have that experience, listen to the way that they thought about things, listen to the way that their mindset worked. So raise your hand, get out of your comfort zone, and that's where the learning curve comes in, because actually, the way that our brains work is that we start down a path, we start learning, and we go, oh, this is awesome, this feels like fun, we get really excited about it. And then we go into the, what was I thinking? This is really hard. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm kind of doing it. We get up there, I've got it, and then all of a sudden, I know nothing. 
And there is an end point here, but I feel like that end point is not going to ever get there. Like we're never gonna get to that end point. Let's just uh, <laughs> um, get rid of those illusions right now. We're never gonna get to that I'm done. I've talked to CTAs who say, oh, there's still something else to learn. I don't know everything. And that's just really powerful to hear. So knowing that as we're going down this path, that we're going to have these ups and downs, and it's actually in those dips where our brains are processing things, and we're actually doing a whole bunch more learning than we think we do, even though we feel like we're at the stuck point. And I did want to bring it back to um, really what the presentation title is, how do you find your own path? Because we've kind of said up to this point that, hey, there's so much out there. It's really overwhelming. Go on to Trailhead. There's like 1,500 modules right now. How do I know where to start? How do I know where to, to pick my spot, to find my spot? And methodologies like this one, um, I actually picked this up from Pei, who runs a Zen How Academy. And, um, it was a really powerful concept, this concept of ikigai. It's a Japanese concept. And it's about this Venn diagram here, bringing everything together and really finding where you'll be happy, where you'll be useful. And we have all of these different sections. So what is it that you love doing? Do you love talking to people? Do you love sitting in a room and building things? You can love both, by the way. Um, what does the world need? What are, what's the job market right now? Where, where are those open jobs at? What's the new hot product there? Or where's there space for me that I can fill this space? What can you be paid for? Because at the end of the day, that's what we're all here for. <laughs> we, we need to pay the bills as much as all of the fun volunteer work and things like that is um, great. At the end of the day, we have responsibilities. And then also, what are you good at? So what comes naturally to you? What can you bring to the table? And sometimes that's really hard to, uh, to admit sometimes as well. So I know that uh, in the US we have what we call the SATs. You have a math score, you have a verbal score. Now I love reading, I love um, literature and everything like that. That was always my strong street languages. And then I kept getting these really good math scores. And like that kind of thing is something that I'm starting to talk to my nine-year-old about too. That um, while math might not be the most passionate topic, it is what she's good at. So she should maybe explore that a bit too. And we can all bring this to our sales force spaces too, because what these overlaps are is what you love and what you're good at, well, that's your passion. What you love and what the world means, that could be your mission, vocation, profession. And in the middle of all of that is that really sweet spot, like this ikigai. And that's going to be where you're happy, where you're feeling useful, and really what we can strive to work towards as well. So as you're thinking about your career trajectory, just take a step back and think about, well, what is going to be that sweet spot for me? And even writing it down, writing down what you love, writing down what you're good at, and mapping all of this out can help you to process it because you might be surprised at your answers when you see them in front of you on the page. So I do have some question prompts because I know that all of us here um, in the Salesforce world, we like to have things like sketched out or at least a starting space for us. And, um, just some ideas. So what's that one task that you're currently doing that you really love doing? Um, I know that for me at one point it was teaching. I love to teach people. I love to, uh, to help people to learn something new, to get to those aha moments. And that was what I was really passionate about. And what would you lose? So what don't you like doing? There's some things like if you're running your own consultancy, you have to do finance because you have to send out the invoices. There's gonna be some things that you like you can't get rid of. But if you could, what would be that one thing that you would get rid of? What's something that you don't wanna do? What comes naturally to you? What do you just pick up when other people say, oh, this is really hard, and you're like, is it? Like, it doesn't seem that hard to me. What comes really naturally? And maybe that might be something that you want to follow that path a little bit too, because it doesn't always have to be hard. It doesn't have to be this huge learning curve. It might be that something comes easier to you just because of the way your brain is built. We're all different, and that's what makes us awesome teammates. 
And then what do you want to bring to the world? So what is it that you want to leave as a legacy in your career? Do you want to do awesome projects and get the customers really excited about that? Do you want to um, be teaching people new things? Do you want to be selling those projects? What kind of thing do you want to be doing? What's What's basically your legacy gonna be in Salesforce? And it doesn't have to be huge. I know that word legacy sounds like it's this huge thing, but we can just be doing what we like to do in our spot and being really good at it. So um, I have left myself plenty of time, hopefully, to go through these next two slides because it's all about finding your own winding path because it is going to be just that. It's gonna be your path. It's gonna be yours to do with what you want. And coming back to that idea of every culture having different parenting advice, well, everybody in the Salesforce world has their own experiences. We come with our own advice. I know I've mentored people before, I've given advice, but my advice might not be right for the next person. And you might be getting advice from 10 different people and they're all saying maybe the same thing or different things, but it's all about taking those bits that work for you and then just leaving the rest. And it's not about saying like, no, I'm not gonna do that because uh, making enemies or anything like that. It is just really recognizing that one piece of advice might work for somebody else. And I've always found that for myself, those are the moments that are the hardest is when somebody is telling me, oh, you should do it something this way. Then I get in my head, I'm like, I thought I knew what I was doing, but now it feels like I don't. And it always came back to that hey, this is the right advice for somebody else, but I actually need to leave this. And it takes a while to get there sometimes. It takes a while to get to that point of recognizing that. Also, nothing is forever. So um, this is something I talk about for a lot of entry-level roles or beginner roles. Sometimes it's just getting your foot in the door, and it doesn't have to be a forever role. It can be either getting your foot in the door, it can be testing something out and seeing if you like it. If you're not sure if consultancy is the right for you thing for you or an end user is not the right thing for you, then try it out. Find If you find a role, if you find a contract, try it out for a little bit. See if you like it or not, you might be surprised. Don't be afraid of trying something new. I think I already mentioned this one a bit, but even if it's scary, that's where you're going to grow the most. That's where you're really going to be evolving the most, putting yourself out there in those situations. And I was actually just talking to somebody this morning, I'm gonna steal Steph Herrera's um, story, when she was doing her first interview in the Salesforce world, she said, well, um, I, uh, <laughs> what was it? that they asked a question, she didn't know the answer, and then she said, well, yes, I, I am able to do that. And that's the way she phrased it, I am able to do that. Whatever that thing was, that task, I am able to do it. And when she got the job role, they went, she went in and they're like, oh, you don't know how to do that. She's like, no, I didn't at that point, but I had friends, I knew where to go, and I knew whose shoulder to tap on to get me there. So it is drawing on your network, and that can sometimes be that support system behind you when you're going out into that really scary, I don't know what I'm doing kind of moment. Just knowing that the awesome community in this room, you can look right and left and see other people there, and they're there for you, they've got your back. You also don't always have to go up. Sometimes it's going horizontal or down. I know people who have come from exec positions into the Salesforce world and actually said, you know what, I'm gonna take a step down to learn from the ground floor up and then go up again. So that like organizational hierarchy, you don't always need to be shooting for going up. And you don't always need to be going into a management role if management is not your thing. Like that is okay. Um, explore and make learning a habit. So habits are really powerful. I've uh, started to do this year, my um, resolution was I had been doing yoga for ages, but I had been doing it like on and off. I started doing it every day, just like a little session every day. Some days I skip it, but most of the time I don't. And by doing that, everybody around you starts to realize that that's your habit. My husband says, oh, when are you doing your yoga? When are you uh, like going to do this? And it doesn't become a question of if, it becomes a question of when. When in my day am I going to start to do this? And the same thing goes for learning. If you say, 
every morning I'm going to do a trailhead module or maybe not every morning but once a week I'm going to do a trailhead module and you do that over and over and over again it becomes a habit it becomes something repeatable and it doesn't become a question of if I'm going to do it this week it becomes a question of when I'm going to be doing it this week so um, don't be afraid to ask for help make time for self-care and then be stubborn like just be as stubborn as possible this is your career do what you want if somebody else doesn't like it it's yours that's it's your job role it's your career that you're taking into account and now I got the five minute time down. So it is time to go into my mom jokes because, hey, mom jokes are even worse than dad jokes. Yes, my kids are going to hate me one day. <laughs> they're, going to, they're going to be that uh, embarrassed uh, moms here again. So things will get feta. I'm feeling blue. Be a good a cheer and be pretty strong. I live in France, so I have to bring the cheese with me. I'm rooting for you. Belief in yourself, you've got this. This is my encouragement for all of you. <laughs> so I know, um, really bad dad jokes, but mom jokes. <laughs> but I will leave some time open for q and I saw some come in on the app already, but I wanna leave it open for people in the room too. I think we have a microphone that's going to be going around. We've got about three minutes left, so hopefully we'll be able to get in a couple. Does anybody have any questions? Oh. <laughs> it's okay, I can repeat if uh, the mic isn't working. Oh, it's on? Perfect. Thank you. Yes, yeah. Thank you, Tiffany. I remember you because you teach me the first army course. It's a pleasure to see today your lecture again. My question is the full time, I'm working full time, I'm a family man, and how can you achieve your goal and you, how can you organize your time when you want to study and to achieve your exam, uh, to, to get more certification? Oh, awesome. Yeah, so the question just for those are who are watching from home on streaming is how can you juggle family life with certifications and studying new things and when you've got all of this stuff going on? It's a really good question. I don't know that I'm the expert here because I always feel like I'm dropping a ball somewhere, but I think that everybody feels that way. I've talked to quite a few people and everybody feels like there's always a ball dropping somewhere. It is about prior prioritizing though. So I know that uh, today being here with all of you, I ended up missing my daughter's uh, race that she was doing this morning that she wanted me to come to. And it's just little things like that, that like you're not here for it. But at the same time, I'm here with all of you and I'm talking to all of you and this is really important. So it's about prioritizing and then making everybody aware of those priorities too around you and just making sure that I know um, if I've been working quite a bit and studying quite a bit, I'll take like a week or two and just step back and do more family time and more family things. So it's not perfect, but it's knowing that there's going to be ups and downs and just trying to go with the flow a little bit there. But uh, yeah, it's not perfect for sure. Anybody else? Hi, even uh, it's similar kind of question. I'm a Salesforce admin, like uh, in our work, like uh, it's uh, completely uh, into Salesforce admin role and uh, we have uh, role and uh, we have lot of things to do. So if I want to do some certification and all, so I will be already tired with uh, the work which I do on a daily basis and after that I'll be taking care of my two kids mm -hmm. and family. So yeah, it's uh, I feel really difficult to take one more certification. So I have two certifications in my bucket yet uh, as of now, but uh, how to proceed with the like I just want to go for advanced uh, admin certification. So, but I feel like uh, I, I don't have that much time to spend on that. 
to go for that certification so how do i go with that yeah and i see heads nodding here as you're saying that so just know that you're not the only one everybody here in the room is like yes that's that's always the challenge so again just for at home um the question was around how do you find time when you've got a busy job, you've got kids at home, you've got everything else going on. We always have things getting thrown at us. And a lot of times what I end up saying on my courses, sorry, <laughs> is um, be kind with yourself because we're all human at the end of the day and we do get things thrown with us. If we set a goal and we don't make it, that's okay. Like just be kind with yourself. You can push things back if you need to. Try to find learning that overlaps with what you're doing right now. And then I found that uh, getting like your kids involved in your studying and just letting the two worlds overlap sometimes is helpful too. So my kids will watch me doing a trailhead module and I'll call them over from their playtime and let them click on the button so that they get the confetti. Like just those little things are really helpful because then it gets them excited. And uh, I'm not sure that she's here today, but I know Sylvia does this too, Sylvia De Niro, that um, she, her kids will ask her before bedtime, have you gotten the confetti yet? So <laughs> just uh, maybe letting the worlds overlap a little bit might help out. So. That's really nice, yeah, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. So I know we're at time, I got the, the end here but thank you so much all for coming if you want to connect i'm always happy to talk find me in hallways things like that find me on linkedin and thanks all for joining me here markout is marketing automation for salesforce our team of certified professionals can lead you on your sales cloud marketing cloud account engagement and marketing cloud engagement journey implementation at MarCloud, we can assist with new implementations and complex migrations. Templates and training courses. MarCloud offers on-demand training courses to help you on your Salesforce journey. Free account audit. Understand your platforms with our free account audit. Support with ad hoc projects. Manage and implement your Salesforce and Marketing Cloud goals on a one-off project basis. Ongoing consulting. Lean on MarCloud as an extension of your team during your Salesforce journey. Simply visit our website to learn more.